to Aarti. Rajaratnam to you first. What is a negative body image, image and where does this negative body image in adolescent girls come from? Um, Sarah, let me just start with uh, helping us understand that each of us perceives ourselves in a certain way. And how I perceive my body is what is generally referred to as body image. This can be positive in some people, but by and large, you'll notice uh, that, you know, with a lot of negative messaging coming in in, in the last uh, several years, it's become negative. So basically what happens is the person has normal physical appearance, but they tend to perceive it as being flawed, which is where it becomes a negative body image. And over a period of time, this can become what is called body dysmorphic disorder in some people because they are so obsessed with these perceived flaws which may be very very small but in the overall sense they are unable to take their focus away and develop other interests or relationships and their entire world is built around how their body looks or how they perceive themselves to be right in terms of how it's developed of course there's negative messaging right from day one and in the adolescent years Already the child's brain, I mean, the teenager's brain doesn't have such easy access to the thinking part. It's sort of driven uh, almost entirely by the uh, limbic system or the emotional part of the brain. And if you look at a lot of advertising that is um, uh, targeted at this in, in this age group, it's, it's uh, what we call the implicit advertising, which is um, targeting the emotional centers, not so much the thinking centers. And therefore, the adolescent girls, and if I may add, I'd like to also make it gender neutral. Boys also go through this. Yes, I know absolutely. the campaign is more for girls, but I'd also like you to understand that boys also go through this and it's even more difficult for people to understand it, that understand when it when it's a boy who's going through it. So uh, the adolescent years are very, very um, uh, crucial because a lot of identity related aspects are developed at this time. And it's important for us to understand as adults that we can't allow this kind of negative messaging to go across to them. Uh, Aarti, mera sawal aapse, what are the kind of body images issues you have dealt with in your daily practice? And why do adolescent girls buy into the negative body image so much more than the positive body image? Um, so in terms of a practice, when you, um, as a psychologist for o over 22 years now, um, it was not so bad uh, before the advent of the tabs. Now with access to social media, we find a lot more uh, people accessing help. But if you really uh, look at uh, the most common uh, concerns, one is to do with the color of the skin. Uh, and since I work in South India, it's much more pronounced. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to add here, uh, some of our Tamil movies in the 80s had beautiful brown skinned heroines and they were really uh, beautiful in that sense. And now if you notice, most of our um, actresses are not from the South. We've actually outsourced that entire department to people from the North, N nothing against anybody, but uh, we, we, we seem to be uh, looking up to people with a totally different uh, skin tone and skin color. And, you know, when I work with the villages in, in, in South India, I find a lot of young girls trying to be that. And it's, it's, it's almost impossible, right? Because the access to products also for them is very limited. That's one. The second area that we uh, sort of work with is the fat shaming, the body shaming that is associated with the excessive fat in the body. But since we're focusing a lot on uh, the color of the skin, I'd also like to quote a small example. Recently, I was working with a young boy, uh, boy, and I'm mentioning this specifically because I think somewhere we are very skewed when we are addressing this issue only from adolescent girls. So the boy's mother keeps telling him, you know, wash yourself, use a lot more soap, then you'll become fairer. And the poor fellow, you know, he's trying his level best to somehow think that, you know, if he uses a particular product, if he scrubs his skin a little more, he's going to look better. And these are all very unfair ways of working with it. And to your second question, why are adolescents more susceptible? This is the age when they see till about 10 years old, most children have an identity which is very, very um, uh, similar to what the family likes to see them. They perceived as part of the family. 
slowly this moves towards what we call the identity crisis or they're trying to search for who am I and this identity is something that they want very unique for themselves something slightly different from their family more in line with their peers with the ad advent of social media and the access to a lot of filters especially if you notice even the peer group is struggling with a lot of body dysmorphia what our selfie dysmorphia dysmorphia is basically a faulty uh, perception of the body so in that sense what is really happening with a lot of children is that you know the ideals are becoming higher and higher mm. and I'm not able to match that and also in the teen years the body is going through um, a huge growth spurt a lot of changes uh, things that they're not able to make sense of and there's also something called the imaginary audience that most teenagers go through most teenagers believe that 50 to 500 people are always watching them and therefore, a lot of these things become more pronounced than they actually are, which is why, you know, as therapists, we find it more difficult now to deal with the number of cases seeking help. Well, thank you, Aarti. And you said that the girls and girls are very difficult to go through this situation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.